Apologies for the beeps and boops. Welcome back to Undertale Genocide. Hello, Flowey. You're the only one here for me now. Since I've murdered everyone else so far. Aside from people I can't, because... Gerson is savvy. He, uh... He stays inside of his little NPC shop area, and I can't hurt him. He's clever like that, the old fart. Thankfully, it also means I don't have to kill him, but, you know... God, how, how messed up would it be... If there was, like... Wait, why am I going this way? Ugh, I'm, I'm, I'm just walking and talking. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing, and I really should stop doing that, but... Commentator curse, it happens. Anyway, um... Man, wouldn't it... I was gonna say, wouldn't it be messed up if you had to kill the shopkeepers, and they get, like, a... Like, a really... Morbid, like, full art death, because they're already, like, full art in their, uh... You know, full art in their normal poses, right? Ugh. <laughs> That'd be kind of creepy. But, like, so fitting for the genocide run, right? Somewhere it's Tuesday, so be careful. Is it Tuesday? Honestly, don't know now. Hang on a sec, I'm gonna check my phone. Uh, yeah, Tuesday, October the 13th. Huh. Dating the video a bit, but that's fine. My videos usually go up the day I record them anyway, because I don't do a lot of editing yet. Or, I don't usually need to do a lot of editing, and if I do, it's usually something that would delay me a bit, but otherwise, no, I usually just kind of do my thing. Ah, I really should have the timer back on my screen. Ah, okay, there we go. There we go, crisis averted. Except the one that I'm creating by existing. Wait, I should go to the right one. I should be able to loot these now. No. Should be able to just take them. I don't know, maybe professional courtesy. One murderer to another. Okay, yeah, I got everything I need from them. 35 left. Why do I always get the freaks? Nothing else to do. Evacuation? You're yanking my chain, little weirdo. So what if everyone else left work? So what if nobody's buying anything? Par for the course, little weirdo. Par for the course. Well, Metaton didn't tell me I had to work, I guess. But that's the thing. Sometimes he doesn't even call me into work until halfway into my shift. If I don't play it safe, he's gonna yell at me. Okay, maybe yell is the wrong term. It's more like he has this CD album he plays that's entirely full of songs about how bad I am at my job. Ouch. Huh? Everyone else is dead. Does that mean I don't have to work today? God. If that it that it were true, little weirdo. That it were true. <laughs> Sorry, little weirdo. Threats won't work on me. I can't go to hell. I'm all out of vacation days. <laughs> the humor in the... Like, there is still humor in the genocide path. It's just dark humor, and it's still funny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna want a bunch of these. Ah, yes, I really want to buy your weird, dusty artifacts. Not. <laughs> Alone again. Elevators in use. No answer. Locked from the inside. No answer. No goopy janitor dude cleaning up after himself. Aw, 
I was kind of hoping the dude licking the ficus would still be there, because he's literally so embarrassed about coming here without a reservation that he's willing to stay here even if it kills him. <laughs> I mean, it would kind of fit, but I don't know. Might be a bit of grinding in this since I'm already all the way to the core. But I still have 35 kills to get. I don't know, I, th I think the music... Actually, I don't know. This is kind of good, too. The, like, warped version of this. Are there still the, like, preset randoms? No. Because everybody ran away. This is kind of- this music is still kind of cool. Warrior's Path. Hopefully that does still give me encounters. more damage to you in this. Ah, I missed one. Shit. Man, those, uh, and the freaking, uh, frying pan is kind of hard to use. <laughs> Mercenaries emerge from the shadows. They're actually kind of tough. Aww. Ah! Ah! Damn it! range on the frying pan is a little random. Well, not random, but wider because of the uh, multiple hits you gotta do to get it to work. I'm gonna do far worse than pick on you, little eyeball monster. I'm gonna do far worse than pick on you. Oh, get crit! Uh, ah. Oh, so close. Nope. I guess these monsters stayed back to fight, try to fight me off, but... Oh. Not gonna do them a whole lot of good. this area much in my original playthrough because I did the I did like the neutral way of getting through which is just waiting in front of that one force field until it opens a clam burger ah. I'm not 
relax and have a nice snack. Yeah, that's already solved. So I'm actually meandered into the sage's path here. But I mean, the sage's path, all the puzzles are solved because they're all solving them to run away from me, so... Woo, I guess? So is... Yeah, is that just how you get through it normally? Is that when you... Like, you always go through this way, but you deactivate the force field with one of the other two paths, or you're just patient and wait for it to break on its own. Okay. Actually, I get it now. Okay, this is the last bridge I was on before where I grinded a bit. Get out of here. Little giggling weirdo. Yeah, unfortunately, there is going to be grind in this episode. Oh no. Oh no, I got him. Ah. Full of the smell of mustard seed. Yay. God, Toby, you did have to put a positive leveling sound when the love stat increases, don't you? You sadistic bastard. From one sadistic bastard to another, huh? Ooh, gotcha. No regrets. Ugh. Ah! Holy shit, did he just do 12 damage? Yeah, your defense doesn't go up a whole lot as... when you level this way. Or when you level at all, I should say. Because technically you don't level as a pacifist. And yet you feel like you're taking way more damage in this playthrough. Strange. I guess just because you have more hit points. Even though you... Sorry, I gotta, I gotta shut up when I'm doing that because it screws up my timing if I'm trying to say something. My fingers get lag. How many times have gamers done this? Simply paced about a room, waiting for things to attack you, so that you can kill them and acquire loot and experience points. Ah. And we do it without even thinking about it, really, because, well, it's what you do in those games, right? But, to be fair, one doesn't need to do it in this game, but here I am. Slowly working down the encounter count. Gotcha. Oh, probably didn't help anyway, because... I'm assuming two, like, normal hits would... Ah, kill this thing anyway. Yeah. Two normals would have killed her anyway, I think, so the crit was kind of not needed, but eh. It was good to do. Ugh. Like, even, like, even Pokemon forgives the random encounter system, because the Pokemon that come out and attack you, like wild Pokemon, they come out and attack you because they want to try to prove themselves to you. Alright. So, you know, the fact that they fail just means, oh, I'm not good enough. Jeez, but even that sounds a little depressing now that I think about it. But, um, you know, these creatures don't want to kill me. I mean, these these last couple of guys might just because they're like the last line. But like all the stuff I ran into beforehand, some of them were hitting on me, for God's sakes. So, you know, you know, Toby, you can shake the finger at people, um, ah, you know, the genocide that people typically do in video games. But like, it, it makes sense in context in a lot of areas. Like, in every Final Fantasy, for example, you have to kill the random encounters, or at least run away from them. There's no way to mercy them. And, like, even in Shin Megami Tensei, where you can talk to the monsters, 
you, you're doing so to bolster your team so that you can fight stronger monsters and things that don't listen to reason, like most boss fights, for example, right? So, like... So, you know, it, um... You can't shake the finger at everybody who plays video games. Just, and, you know, fights random encounters, does it without thinking. Because, I mean, that's the way a lot of those games are designed. Undertale wasn't designed like that, and it makes you, it makes you, you know, if you're doing the Pacifist run, every encounter is kind of special, because you need to figure out how to solve it peacefully, which is a lot harder than just doing what I'm doing now, where I can shoot the breeze and murder things. Oh, pick on you. You have no idea. You have no idea. Now, Toby could has a pretty valid point against people who play, like, open-world games and who, like, freely kill fully fleshed-out characters just because it's, one, it's something they can do, or two, you know, I hope you're not important to the plot, but that's a nice gun you have. You know, the typical Fallout reason for murdering somebody. You, they have a thing you want, and they're not going to give it to you, and you can't barter it out of them, so you take it from them by force. But again, that still fits the setting. I mean, you, you are still being bad. There you go. You're still being bad by doing that, but like, it's kind of to be expected because it's the post-apocalypse in that, right? Whereas in this, this is actually kind of an idyllic world and I'm coming in here and tearing it apart for the lulls, basically. I don't know. It is a video game. I need to remember that. As much as it is kind of like, going, you monster, at every opportunity. Um, it is a video game. Can it make me feel bad? Absolutely. And the fact that it does is wonderful. The fact that a video game... Ah, oh, one-hit wonder, huh? Or one-hit point wonder. Oh, crap. But that a video game can do this to somebody is kind of amazing. And I have to applaud Toby for this. Even as I'm shaking my fist at him going, you bastard. <laughs> right? I love the man for making this amazing game, but I hate the fact that he made this playthrough, this like this version of the game, such a heart-wrenching experience. All right? Like it, like he could have even spun it that it was like it became like a parody of a JRPG where you do run around murdering everything, and everyone like just flips their roles instead of um, you know the game being pacifist normally and then like reacting harshly to you murdering it instead. I mean, that's still cool, and, I'm, and I, again, I still applaud him for doing that, but, like, I don't know. I might just be trying to alleviate my own feelings right now, because this is unpleasant. <laughs> At least these encounters are coming quickly. They're actually going a lot faster than some of the, uh, some of the grinding I had to do for, like, Snowden and stuff. Well, to be fair, Jerry was the reason Snowden's grinding got, got annoying, because, you know, Jerry. Did I get him? Ugh, oh, so close. If I had the empty gun, I probably would one-shot things, but I kind of want the frying pan for the effect. Because, um... The food doesn't scale very well in this for uh, the genocide run. And I'm noticing for the boss fights that matter, you kind of need it to scale, and it's a little irksome that it doesn't. Because, again, like, in, like I said in the Undyne fight, the pacifist playthrough has the advantage of practically everything full heals you. Granted, you die in more... You die easier in... Ah, oh, crap. Oh, that was terrible. Um, even if it did roll the internet's favorite number. Um, ah, crap. I missed one. Nah, that's fine. But, yeah, like, the food is designed for the pacifist playthrough. The genocide playthrough has to kind of, like, make do... So it's kind of why I'm using the frying pan here at the moment. I didn't get the apron, but I, I think I might stick with the cowboy hat for the damage. I don't know how much... Again, the way the numbers work in this, I almost don't know if they matter. I imagine it has to for the attack, though. Because, like, like, I even saw it on the Undine the Undying fight where I was doing, like, a thousand damage around. But, like, the 100s digit was different when my attack was higher and lower. And that actually did make a difference. 
Because, you know, even if you're doing like 1,200 a hit, five of those hits added up to another 1,000, you know? Making the fight all that much faster, which is good, because, like I mentioned, uh, Genociders basically have their attention split two ways when they're trying to do a boss fight. Ah. Or any fight, really. But, um... Pacifists really only have to survive and maybe figure out the puzzle. Admittedly, the, that is the hard part, but, um... Like, they get to attack, air quotes, in, like, in the in-between turns. Like, when the monsters are fighting you, they get to effectively attack and progress their, um... And progress the fight for them. While the Genocider has to actually divvy up his time between murdering you and surviving himself. Which is, you know, it's very basic gameplay, but it does make it harder. Especially if you're not particularly good at the particular bullet hell that's coming at you at the time, and everything starts going to pot. Nope. Nope. There's always that weird quick little extra hit you have to do in the middle of the frying pan's attack sequence. Last couple encounters. So I guess something I asked in the pacifist playthrough is different, in that the the encounters you're running into aren't always the same monster. They're just the same species. Because well, even in the true pacifist ending, we figured we saw like N extra NPCs were added that were all like Sunder planes or all the Vulcans or whatever, right? Like, you know, there isn't just one Vulcan. There's all there's a little family of them. And again, the genocide playthrough proves this as well, because, well, you have to kill the same guy multiple times. It can't be the same guy. It's multiples of the same species. Mostly because my throat is actually getting a little, uh, a little dry. I'll have to get a drink between episodes. But uh, you know, not much more, not much more to say. This is just kind of what's happening now. Oh, there we go. There's the big moment. <sighs> oh, look at that! I almost have four thousand gold again. Woo. All blood money. My, my, so you finally arrived. After our first meeting, I realized something ghastly. You're not just a threat to monsters, but humanity as well. Oh my, that's an issue. You see, I can't be a star without an audience. And besides, there are some people I want to protect. Ahaha, <laughs> eager as always, eh? But don't touch that dial. There's something you haven't accounted for. As any true fan would know, I was first created as a human eradication robot. It was only after becoming a star that I was given a more photogenic body. However, those original functions have never been fully removed. Come any closer, and I'll be forced to show you my true form. Fine then. Ready? It's showtime. I was trying to do a robot voice, so I apologize if it was a little grating. Oh, wow. Um... Are you gonna fight me? You're like, you're all really cool looking and you've got an arm cannon, why aren't you fighting me? I mean... Um... Okay. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. <laughs> that was disappointing. Guess you don't want to join my fan club. Wow. Huh. Okay. <laughs> that was uneventful. I was expecting an honest-to-god boss fight. Um, not a massacre. Oh well. That was a dis- that was actually- that was very disappointing. <laughs> I honestly wish that was something more of a boss fight. I guess you need 99 defense to stand up to me. Because Undyne was actually able to take a hit from me, but... Poor, uh... Poor Metaton didn't stand a fucking chance. Oh well. And we're already here. Damn. Okay, well, since there's going to be a lot of plot dump happening in the future, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Twitter's in the description as usual. Uh, subscription will be... Excuse me. Uh, subscription will be uh, around on the screen somewhere, as, as it's been for the whole episode. I might still put one on the star, just to keep consistent with the rest of the series for now. Um, yeah, that um, that was a whole lot of build-up for nothing. <laughs> Metaton is not a fighter. Metaton is a lover, and... You need a fighter to try to deal with me right now. Um, you know, Undyne stood a chance. She actually did kill me several times. But, you know, determination, I wasn't going to stay down. And, well, unfortunately, she... Hers ran out before mine did. Let's put it that way. So, um, yeah, we're at the end game now. I'm not sure what's left. Because, like, I don't think there's random encounters. So I don't think I need to worry about murdering any massive amounts of innocence anymore. But, like, I heard the bad time is coming up. So that could be a thing. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and uh, ciao for now.